everyone coming to you from my in-home studio. I'm looking for my second and third graders. You guys are spectacular. I have loved seeing all of your entries for Earth Day works. We had some really creative uh, masterpieces and I love that most of you like took recycled pieces and made things to give back to our Earth. Lots of like bird houses and bird feeders and some wall hangings. I was really impressed guys. And so I just wanna say thank you for taking the time out of your crazy busy home life that is, you know, going to school at home and taking the time to work with me and making some beautiful art and to learn more about creating and being in that spirit of, uh, Last week it was all about like ingenuity and learning how to um, think outside the box and use things that already exist and making them into something else. So really great job guys. Now moving on, <laughs> this week's really great. I want you to think about back when you were in kinder and first grade and we had like Insecticamp and there's animals that we learned about when we did camping and things in first grade. So. All of those things when you learned about animals, it's that time of year where we're learning about new animals and I am excited for you guys. We're gonna learn a little bit about the peacock. And I think it's a beautiful bird and um, it's got some really great textures and colors and we're gonna experiment and try to create our own version of a peacock. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna go onto the specials website and you want to find a photo of a peacock that you like and you're going to draw yourself that bird so hmm. i didn't bring my ipad in here so i don't have a picture to draw from let me see so here's a peacock i found um, on my page and I'm gonna kind of zoom in on it. Um, obviously my paper's more of a rectangle because that's what I have left in my stash. And so my composition is going to be kind of a cropped image of a peacock. So this is what I think I want my uh, image to be, where you see a lot of the feathers, a little bit of the body, and I think I wanna see the claw too. Um, so this is a good thing. I'm going to screenshot it so I don't lose it. And you can save that in your pictures um, on your iPads if you have one at home. Or if you're looking at your computer, you can save that composition or the way that you like that. And you're going to just draw it on your piece of paper for me. This right here is a plan, so it is not our final copy, but it is something we're gonna use to make our final copy, so you wanna give me your best drawing and your best effort when creating this. And if you don't like something in one drawing and you want to kind of explore in merge a couple of different pieces together, you can do that too. That's perfectly okay. And I think I'm gonna do that because I like the feathers on that one. It just looks a little more illustrated than I want. So I can go back to Mrs. Mon's website and kind of pick a different feather look if I would like to combine a couple together. That's totally okay. I kind of like this one. So this is going to be my puzzle piece and kind of the layout of what I want my artwork to be. And so then we're gonna start looking at uh, the colors that make these things. So the body is going to be blues and purples. So I'm gonna write blue and purple. My feathers are going to be the blues, the greens, and yellow. So I'm gonna write blue, green, and yellow. Think of everything on here that's gonna be your beak colors, like your oranges and your yellows. So I'm just gonna put a star on those because I know that that needs to be kind of the 
puzzle pieces that I make in that color. My little leg down here. That is going to be it. So I'm gonna put my puzzle piece away and I will tell you what we're gonna do with that in part two. So the first thing you're gonna do after you draw yours is you're going to look at the color combinations and pick one that you wanna do first. I think I'm gonna do my yellows and oranges and stuff like that and it's gonna be for my beak, if you have feet, and then uh, the peacock I have has like orange in the feathers as well. And if you look at my drawing, that's not a lot of paper. It's like a quarter size here, uh, two quarters here, like talking about coins, right? Another quarter, two more quarters. I lost count. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So about ten quarters worth of paper. So looking at this, I'm going to fold it in half. That will give me more than what I need. I'm going to tear it where I can cut it. And this is going to be all the paper I need in that orange and yellow experimental paper. Experimental paper? Miss Vaughn, what do you mean? Oh, oh, oh. guys, we're going to experiment with the materials you have at your house. So if you have paint or pastel or markers, you're going to use those things to create your textured pattern paper. So if you want to make it look like tie-dye, you can make yours look like tie-dye. If you want to make it splatter paint-ish, do that. Make sure you're putting a towel underneath your art or you're doing it outside if you're going to splatter paint. Nobody wants to get in trouble because they made a mess. You hear me? Okay. So make sure you're in a space that you can create in a way that you would like to. I think my shirt inspired me today. Let's do some tie-dye. Bear with me. I'm gonna use water. Here's a good start. So here is my warm experimental paper and warm. Um, it is for my beak. So when it dries, uh, I know that that is for specifically these pieces. We're kind of creating our own puzzle, right? We're creating the puzzle pieces and we're creating the puzzle itself. And we're gonna put that puzzle together when we put our peacock together. That's what a collage is. It's, you know, taking bits and pieces of things that exist or things that you make and using them in a whole new way, making a whole new composition, giving it a new purpose and a new life. Hmm, what else does that sound like? Oh, recycling, right? If you take something like plastic or tin, metal, mm, and you use it, you clean it. So important, guys, if you're recycling, you have to clean out your things. You can't just go, ha, huh, I'm done with orange juice, put it in the recycling bin. It needs to be rinsed out and dried so it can be properly recycled. And then you put those in the recycling bin and then they can be reused and recycled. Or you could do what we did last week and turn them into something else. All right, so we've checked off the yellow and orange pieces, which were my star pieces on here, right? Remember those are um, kind of, instead of color coded, they're symbol coded. And next I'm gonna do the blue and purple. And that's a big chunk of my paper. So if I have a sheet of paper that fits the body, here's one then I would probably do most of that. So blues and purples, experimentations. Hmm. So there is my blue experimental paper. This is for the body. So just keep that in mind. It needs to make sure that your paper is bigger than or will fit your body stencil when it is time to do so. 
Okay. All right. And then my last thing is going to be the feathers. And the feathers, we kind of already decided it's going to be blue mixed with green and then a little bit of yellow or types of green, blue, and yellow. Okay. And that has quite a bit of space it is. It's like more than half of my paper. So I think I'm going to stick with a full piece. It's always better to have more than you need because if I make a mistake or if I want to add something after I've done it, I don't have to go back and make more. I just have plenty of my textured experimental pieces of paper already made. Since my body is done with pastel or crayon and my other stuff is watercolor tie-dye marker stuff. I think I'm gonna do a combination for the feathers. Hmm, let's do, let's do some lime green kind of line work to kind of look like feathery lines, right? <music> blue green kind of feathers that they are I'm gonna actually paint with green and blue watercolor and I'm gonna let the watercolor mix and mingle on the page on its own and I'm not going to forcibly mix them together because I want there to be splotches of each and all of its own uh, and because I used wax on here first that's my resist and so you're gonna see this line pattern and dots that I've created on there already start with green them together you are going to kind of notice okay uh, in an abstract way these are going to become this peacock next time I see you so know that there's a little bit of uh, more math involved next week we got to make patterns we got to cut out our pieces and put them all back together again. But you guys are awesome second and third graders and you're going to totally rock it out and do well. Um, let these dry overnight or if you do this part in the morning, come in in the afternoon and then I will teach you guys in part two how we're gonna put it all back together again. I miss you guys. I hope you have a marvelous week and I look forward to seeing your peacock creations very soon. Make sure when you are turning in your artwork, you can turn it in by sending me an email with a photo of you in the work. You could send it through Dojo for those of you who are my Dojo classes. If you want to have your mom or dad post it on our social media pages so that the rest of the school can see it, there is uh, a Facebook page for uh, art. And then there is also a Twitter account for art. And I'm trying to think of if there's anything else. Oh, on our website, I added a new tab under visual arts. And it is the uh, artist in the making, and that's you guys. So when you send me your pictures, I do my best to kind of screenshot all of them and post them on the website so that the whole school can check out what everybody is making. And I put up some of the really neat Earth Day artworks so that everybody else can kind of check it out and see. Speaking of, this one over here, this beautiful wall hanging, is made out of egg crates that were painted by one of our Force Vista Eagles. So a shout out to Caleb, thank you so much. I really enjoy it and it looks really good in my office, so thank you. I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I look forward to seeing you guys in part two.